Hi, can you convert your bicycle to disc brakes? That is the topic of this video and I will there need to tackle two things. First one is can you do it and how you can do it? And the second one is should you do it? So I will first uh, discuss uh, how to do it and I believe that while I'm doing that you will get an idea of whether that is a good idea for you to do or not. But I will also uh, explicitly discuss uh, whether you should do that at the end of the video just in case to make it longer than 90 minutes and uh, to beat the dripping faucet for the, for the most boring video on the internet uh, okay let us begin in order to convert your bicycle that has rim brakes to use these brakes there are three things to to take uh, care of first one uh, is the brake levers so you need some kind of brake levers for the disc brakes. Second one are disc brakes, disc brake calipers. And third one are the braking brake discs or as uh, cycling industry calls them rotors for whatever reason. Okay, so uh, there are uh, two paths to, to start. <laughs> First one is using mechanical disc brakes. Mechanical disc brakes are actuated using cables just like uh, rim brakes, just like most rim brakes. So uh, if you go with those, you can use your existing brake levers to operate your disc brakes. Only pay attention if your bicycle is a road bicycle, then you need the brake discs for road bicycle brake levers that pull a lot less cable compared to the uh, V-brake brake levers. Uh, the same thing goes for, for uh, cantilever brake levers. They also pull less cables, uh, similar to, to road brakes. So for those you need to use uh, road, brake, uh, road bike mechanical brakes such as uh, Avid BB7R. They have a model for road bikes. Uh, it has letter R at the end. If I'm not mistaken, I'll put an Amazon affiliate link in the bottom of this video so I can make millions and so you can see the product and the prices. So. Uh, if memory serves me, that is the solution. And for the other bikes, you use the, the standard MTB disc brakes that, that work with most modern <clears throat> tracking or, or flat bar uh, brake levers that operate for V brakes. So there are two types of mechanical discs. We're talking about calipers here. So if you are uh, reusing your old levers, you will need to just uh, pay attention to which kind of discs you will be using. If you choose to go with hydraulic disc brakes or if you have <laughs> hydraulic rim brakes like uh, uh, Magura makes some models, HS11 I think, uh, not 100% sure by the memory. Anyway, if you have those <laughs> or if you go with hydraulic disc brakes, you will have to get uh, 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 brake levers that uh, fit your brake calipers chosen. So for hydraulic brake levers, it's best to get a set of a lever and a caliper unless if you are swapping and buying everything it's best to buy those in pairs so that you are sure they work well with each other okay so the the first thing i've already touched upon the second thing that is the the brake calipers you will of course need brake calipers in order to have these brakes that work and uh, in order to mount brake these brake calipers you will need uh, this brake mount here this frame does not have a disc brake mount. I cannot mount a disc brake on this frame and there are adapters. For the rear brake, there are adapters that screw on to the, using the bolt that holds V brakes or, or cantilever brakes in place. There it is screwed on and it is also held in the other place by the wheel's axle or screwed on with some sort of a clamp somewhere lower and it has a, a disc brake caliper mount so you can use it and if you have a metal frame there should be no problems and no damage with that patent. Generally rear brakes cannot exert too much braking torque because the rear wheel usually loses traction when you brake hard unless your bicycle is heavily loaded at the rear. That is one scenario where you might get a bit greater braking torque at the rear before the rear tire loses grip and starts skidding 
because of the uh, load transfer when you're braking and I have an article explaining hard braking so hard braking <laughs> hard braking and I will put a link to that article you make it pop up in your top right hand corner that is for the rear brake for the front brake you also need to have a place to mount the, the brake however when we talk about front uh, brakes uh, they exert a lot more braking torque and if you use forks that do not have uh, this brake mount, this one does. There are different types of mounts, some that are where the disc uh, brake caliper is screwed on from the side and some where it is directly screwed on into the fork from, from this side, so, so it's a bit thicker. Uh, this is the, the differences and pros and cons of each are not uh, beyond the topic of beyond the range of this video, beyond the scope, but the basic idea is that if your fork does not have a disc brake mount of any kind, that means that it is most probably not strong enough to sustain the torque that disc brake creates. Uh, it is a common misconception that disc brakes are a lot more powerful than rim brakes. The biggest problem of disc brakes is their modulation. That, uh, sorry, the biggest advantage and their modula braking modulation, especially in the wet. But as far as braking power goes, it's not that much of a difference because as you can see, rim brakes have a disc <laughs> that is wide over 600 millimeters. So it's a lot more than 200 millimeters, which is considered to be huge for these brakes. So the, the problem with these brakes, why they create a lot more load on the fork is that the braking torque happens here at the end of the fork leg, that which is on rim brake bicycles and forks made to be light and doesn't have to be very strong because rim brakes are anchored at the top and so they have a very short lever to exert any twisting force on the, on the, the fork legs. While this brake is, this brake is mounted down here and it uses a very long lever to exert torque and that's why forks need to have very strong uh, legs and also they need this uh, upper section to be very strong in order to resist all that bending and, and torque. So in my opinion and experience it's not a good idea to attach any kinds of adapters to uh, fork legs that are not designed with a disc brake mount themselves. If you wish to convert to disc brakes it is best to just swap your fork when it comes to the front brake and use a, a fork that is designed for a, for a disc brake. Another catch or caveat is that uh, this is a good example. With a braking disc that is 180 millimeters in diameter, this, uh, this fork was not strong enough and I could uh, sense it and notice the fork bending when I'm braking hard and as soon as the braking force is just slightly uh, decreased, not, not the brake released, it will bend back and you can feel it as some sort of jitter, so the, the, like a vibration, like, a mo like, like jerking motion and uh, you can see the fork leg uh, bend o with your naked eye, you can see it deform and, and twist and so uh, not all the bicycle forks are designed for very large, 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 di large diameter brake discs. So if you are not sure what the manufacturer recommends, go with the 160 millimeter discs to be on the safe side. Otherwise you may risk the fork uh, cracking and having problems. So that is the, the thing about uh, mounting brake caliper. So for rear it's okay to use adapters. Again, this is my opinion based on my experience, but on the front I would not use a fork with an adapter. I would use a fork that is designed for these brake calipers and not exceed its recommended uh, brake disc or rotor diameter. So that, that's about uh, when, it it when it comes to that. And now let's talk about mounting uh, brake uh, uh, discs. For that, uh, in my opinion and experience, it is not a good idea to try any hex or adapters, just find a hub or get a hub that has mounts for a brake disc or rotor and release your wheel with or rim with that hub. So everything else I think it's a lot more risky and a lot more headache in the long run.
So to recap recapitulate, we need to figure out the levers, figure out how to mount calipers and figure out how to mount discs. Those are three things to take care of. Some parts you can reuse, some not, depending on your choice and your uh, bicycle setup and what you have already. Uh, you will, of course, if even if you go with mechanical disc brakes, you will most probably need to use uh, longer housings and cables because the brakes will not end up high here, but be a lot lower. So we'll need longer housing and probably new cables. So that's another thing to, to have in mind and be able to cut the cables to size and root them and everything. Now, uh, should you replace your uh, rim brakes with uh, disc brakes? I wrote an article about the, the pros and cons of disc brakes compared to rim brakes. I'll put a link to it in the top right hand corner. But uh, briefly put, if you live in a mountainous area, especially if there is a lot of rain, those are the, how do I say, those are some reasons that should, that can get you thinking to getting these brakes and there they make more sense. The opposite scenario if you, is if you live in flatlands especially if there's not much rain. That is the scenario where the downsides, where the upsides, the, the upsides of these brakes are the least, uh, how do I say, shown, up, 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 apparent, and you will still have to put up with all their downsides, like rubbing and extra weight and uh, extra complication and so on. So uh, for those that are in a mix between those two, uh, which is the case for me, uh, I have a, you know, nearby mountain where I like to go on weekends and I cycle in the flats during the week and so it's a mixed terrain and I ride all year long in both sun and the rain. Uh, it still boils, boils down to seeing and me measuring the pros and cons of disc brakes versus rim brakes and choosing for yourself but the, the, that's for everyone to decide. Some people swear by disc brakes. <laughs> I on the other hand swear by rim brakes and I've never had problems with high quality rim brakes with high quality pads. Uh, the same goes for these brakes. I've tried some very poor quality disc brakes with poor quality pads and they were awful, worse than uh, some moderately quality rim brakes. Uh, so not every disc brake or rim brake is good. You need to find the quality ones that goes without saying and uh, find the good quality brake pads. But when those are considered and compared to the high quality models, uh, these brakes are generally, their main advantage is modulation in the wet or in the mud and breaking force when the mud is really deep so that it covers your rim, then rim brakes are not very effective. Okay, even though when you're in such mud, the bicycle will stop on its own most of the time, you don't need very strong braking. So, and uh, so the modulation in the wet and they don't wear the rims out so fast. If you live in a hilly area with uh, a lot of rain, you may be, because rim brakes use rims for braking, they will wear them out eventually. And in those areas, you might uh, see a bit uh, more frequent uh, uh, need for rim replacement. And it is simpler to replace just the braking disc compared to relacing your wheel. So in that case, the hassle of the adjustment of these brakes and the dealing with their uh, rubbing, which happens more often than most people like to uh, experience <laughs> or admit if they are fans of these brakes. But uh, in that case, that uh, rubbing hassle can be outweighed by the easier replacement of brake discs compared to replacement of the whole wheels. So those are some things to consider. I hope I haven't uh, talked for more than 30 minutes and I hope this gives you enough information uh, to make a, an educated decision for yourself what you think is the best and I, I think I've remembered to hit all the high points and all the catches and caveats that you might face when you're in a pro project like this so that you know uh, in advance what you are getting into and want to, to consider. Thank you very much for watching. Of course, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, uh, hit that bell option so you get notified whenever I upload a new video and uh, in, if you if you're still awake of course if you like this <laughs> that's it uh, again thank you for watching and cheers it's not over yet you thought it was over <laughs> just a brief digression it's a very fun for me a friend just reminded me uh, <laughs> we talked 
uh, I wrote an article about the pros and cons of disc brakes and explained there why rubbing is inherent to disc brakes and why I see that as a problem and something that is not a case of bad model of disc brakes but it's a wonder when they do not scratch and uh, on some local cycling forums people were very critical about my opinion on that topic and uh, called me different names including retro grouch and worse <laughs> but uh, relatively recently i saw a video by a top class cyclist uh, mr Froome. i will put a link to that video if i manage to make it pop up i'm not sure if youtube allows it if not i'll use the comment section or the the video's description but anyway for me it was very interesting to see a top class <laughs> road cycling professional <laughs> complain about that problem and their mechanics not being able to fix it I don't think they are incompetent mechanics and I don't think that the quality of the equipment on that bicycle that he rides is made to cut costs <laughs> so it's probably not cheap but the problem is inherent to these brakes in my opinion and experience and I find it a bit funny and uh, <laughs> ironic and uh, interesting that uh, uh, he published that video and so on I I can point it and say <laughs> I told you so <laughs> and uh, that's it now it, it's definitely over the video cheers <laughs>